Hello, I'm Dr. David Clark. Congratulations on your purchase of the new BioFit Posterior System by BioClear. Let's quickly review the five steps for success with Modern Composite, or if you're outside of the United States, Modern Composite. All right, let's go. Number one, pre-wedging. Pre-wedging has a whole bunch of benefits, and we can review those at another time. Let's go ahead and review what, what uh, pre-wedging actually is. We want to place the pre-wedge or a wedge before we cut the cavity preparation. So we're going to go ahead and insert the appropriate diamond wedge at about a 45 degree like a suture needle. Now, it doesn't go through the soft tissue, it obviously goes on top of the soft tissue. But you'll notice I'm coming in at a 45 degree under the contact to do the pre-wedge and then take the other end of the special cotton pliers and push on the wedge to give it one last little oomph. Let's review the selection process for diamond wedges. The first thing that you want to do is to evaluate a preoperative bite wing. Ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, what do the roots look like as far as shape? Number two, what does the crustal bone look like? And once again, as a reminder, I'm using the yellow or large diamond wedge about 70% of the time. Let's take a look at some clinical cases. On this first one, you're going to see some very tight root space. In here, you're going to be using the small wedge, most likely. The small wedge is smaller than any wedge that we've seen before, and there's no way you would get a wooden wedge in that very tight embrasure. Let's take a look at the next case. Right here, what wedge would I use? Probably a medium. Even though it looks like there's lots of space, look at the crestal bone, it's quite high. Let's look at the next case. How about this space? Probably a yellow or large diamond wedge. Let's look at the next space. Right here, probably the blue or extra large diamond wedge. Let's take a look at the clinical case on this particular situation. Here we are preoperatively. This radiograph demonstrates the difficulty that the previous dentist had closing this very difficult and wide embrasure. Here we are assembled with the yellow bicuspid twin ring separator and the extra large blue diamond wedge. And here we are postoperatively comparing the finished result of a modern injection molded restoration versus a traditional burnished contact. I'm sure glad those days are finally ended. Here is a clinical photograph demonstrating pre-wedging in a case where I am about to retreat a quadrant of failed amalgams and composites. Step two, pick the appropriate biofit matrix. Now once you've cut your cavity preparation, you're going to remove the pre-wedge and you'll either be able to reuse that pre-wedge or sometimes you can do progressive wedging and move up to a larger size because you've compressed the papilla and you've also begun to push the teeth apart. All right, so the most commonly used biofit posterior matrix is the 5.5 millimeter matrix. Now make sure and go ahead and slide this in with a little bit of a uh, tilt because it will nestle nicely under the tooth. Step three, hold and fold the occlusal tab of the biofit matrix. Once you've inserted the matrix, you want to take that little tab and press it down very aggressively against the neighboring tooth. That's going to bend the tab down and you want to put good pressure on here to drive this thing as far apically as you can. The next thing you're going to do as you go ahead and reinsert the wedge, you want to take this wedge and as you're inserting the wedge, make sure and press the tab down with your other finger. So I'm going to use my thumb here for demonstration. You want to keep pressing the tab down and then drive the wedge interproximally this way and once again give it a push. You want to always hold the tab down because if you don't, the matrix can slide lingually or buckly, it also can rise up. So if you'll just hold the tab down, and we put this big fat tab on there to put your thumb on or your other finger on, it will really help that matrix to stay right where you want it. Step four. What we're going to do is we're going to get our special forceps for the twin ring, and you want to make sure and place the, the uh, tines of the forcep on the resin part of the separator, not on the metal. You have no power on the metal, you can damage the separator. Place this on the resin portion and make sure you use, to use the appropriate uh, twin ring forceps, not just whatever forceps you have laying around. Okay, and so you'll notice that you have a lot of power with the way this thing is arranged. Now, what we wanna do when we place the forcep 
is you want to place this more like a rubber dam clamp than sort of the old thinking with traditional separators that just sort of clamp on the tooth. This is going to go apically and it's going to stay very well seated and avoid slip off. So I'm placing the separator on here and you'll notice I'm placing it fairly aggressively toward the gingiva. And um, a lot of the doctors are sort of doing it the old fashioned way and placing it too high. You need to seat it gently against the gum tissue and you can use gentle pressure to when you first place it for a patient who is not anesthetized. You get a little pressure anesthesia and place it gently there. It should be, have no problem for discomfort. Then the next thing you want to do is rock the separator back and forth like this. Make sure that it's seated fully apically. You're going to have great retention of the, of the twin ring against slip off with this feature. We're almost there. Step five. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and expand and appose the matrix. This replaces old fashioned technique like burnishing. Burnishing has got to go away. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your micro pliers that come with the system and you're going to go ahead and take those micro pliers and you're going to expand the matrix buccolingually. So what you do first is you take the cotton pliers closed, you insert them into the cavity preparation and then let go and let them expand. And you want to widen that contact buccolingually as wide as you can. And then the last thing you do is you take the cotton pliers and you're going to lift them up like this. We're going to rotate them this way and that will appose or push the matrix against the neighboring tooth. Now, take your mirror and look from the buckle and from the lingual. Make sure that it is absolutely apposed with a large, large contact surface area against the neighboring tooth. It's really laying there passively and it's held in place by this ratcheting action of the twin ring. Let me show you a difficult clinical case. To expand and appose will be a little different in each situation but it will be the same basic principle each time. This particular case has a large cavity and a wide embrasure. And yet with a little patience, I achieved a great contact. To expand and oppose is an important new skill set that will become a valuable asset in daily practice. All right, now we're ready to injection mold.